with the iRacing esports scene being heavily oversaturated with drivers, I will instead blaze my own trail and become the world's first NASCAR 2001 professional esports athlete. So I'm playing this through the DuckStation PS1 emulator, and one of the cool things DuckStation allows is you can map a Logitech G29 racing wheel or just any equivalent modern sim wheel to what's called an NGCon pad, which was a third-party pad released for the PlayStation 1. And because the pad featured both analog steering inputs as well as analog gas and brake inputs, there is your de facto wheel support for the PlayStation 1, and therefore allows you to play all these old-school PS1 games in ways the developers did not intend you to play them such as being a sim racing tryhard when this game was, you know, built for small children. So we'll turn all the realism options on, set the difficulty to legend, and we'll go to a cookie cutter track. We'll settle on Texas Motor Speedway here, and it is time to pick a car. Loading into the car select showroom, we get a massive blast of nostalgia and get to admire these beautiful PS1 era models and cars that vaguely resembled Gen 4 era stock cars. This was, of course, the 2000 NASCAR season, thanks to EA's strange naming convention. And uh, we're going to settle on Dale Jr. here, because Dale Jr. actually won the race at Texas, so it seems natural we should drive the car that won at Texas. Well, at Texas. Get this great loading screen that was totally not designed in five minutes. We hadn't evolved quite to the extent of interesting loading screens in the PS1 era, and this default setup is a disaster doesn't want me to run any downforce, wedges at 50%, but let's try it out just to get a baseline in. First thing I'm noticing is that the 1.5 miler package is interesting. Uh, we're barely hitting 190 mile an hour going into turn one when these cars were in reality screaming around this joint, and it also plows like a dump truck, so we're going to need some setup work on this bad boy here. And no, if you guys were wondering, this version of Texas is not laser scanned. Uh, turns three and four are actually three corners, so we'll go through three here, then four, and then turn five on the corner exit. EA, I guess, believe Texas is a quint oval instead of a quad oval, but regardless, I'm always up for a challenge in my young esports career. Let's go fuck with the setup, because this thing won't turn. Uh, we'll start with the gears, uh, because three and four are definitely too tall, and I'm not hitting the chip like I should be going off into the corner. I have no benchmark as for adjusting what does what. I'm not showing like an estimated mile an hour, so I'm just going to have to guess, which is great. Thanks, EA. On a more serious note, it's actually quite sad that a PS1 NASCAR game developed for actual children has more setup options than NASCAR 21 Ignition. Like, I can actually do things and try and accomplish things in the setup menu, whereas Ignition is literally just one preset slider between loose and tight. Anyways, let's abuse the tire model. Wedge all the way to the left. Left bias all the way to the left. Rear bias all the way to the right. Let's take fuel out too. I want this thing so loose it backs it into the wall, if that's even possible in this game. Anyway, taking the green flag for our first flying practice lap. We're actually going one mile an hour slower into the corner. But take a look at this. It, it, actually, it actually turns on me and, you know, kind of goes vaguely towards the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, the car kind of wanders a bit. The fronts aren't gripping one-to-one -one like you'd expect from a modern sim, but like I can kind of figure out vaguely how to drive it, and it's not horrible. Through three, four, and then five here, it actually hugs the bottom quite nicely, and we come rocketing out of turn five, crossing the start-finish line at 181 mile an hour, seven grand on the RPM gauge. Uh, to me, this drives like the Canon series car on iRacing, where it's just really neutered and doesn't have that like final 250 horsepower that you'd expect from a cup car. Uh, anyway, let's go to qualify, and first lap's a throwaway because for whatever reason in this game, the flying lap starts you in third gear, running way too slow, so your first lap is just completely useless, but we'll use the first lap to build up momentum for a second lap and get the tires warm, which is probably simulated in this game. I don't know. Through three, four, and five here, we'll try and get a good line through it, get a good run off the corner, but yeah, it seems like this car doesn't have a lot of high-end torque, so you really have to build momentum all the time, or there's too much drag on the car. But anyway, green flag, crossing line at 180, a bit slower than I wanted to be. Take a nice wide line here into one. The car rotates pretty well without over-rotating on me. I can get it sealed to the bottom of the track vaguely, kind of. But we're 8 tenths up on our lap one time, which is quite promising. Into the 3-4-5 complex, and this car is actually hugging the bottom really nice now. The car is really dialed in. I don't know what more I could do to this thing to make it turn even better, uh, but this is apparently all we can really get out of this engine. We are flying at 2987. EA definitely did not give these cars enough power. The real life pull time by Terry Labonte was a 28-1. Anyway, pre-race intro. Let's see how we compared to the field. 
On Legend difficulty, a 2987 was good enough for Paul, but how did the AI stack up against us? We have Mark Martin with a 30.9. He's over a second slower than us. The AI was not prepared for the utter domination of someone from the future coming to play this with a Logitech G29. They are over a second off pace.